unstoppable. Unbelievable, right? I got backup devices after backup devices. So I'm finishing this one. Y'all look up over at the other one. All right. <laughs> you can't stop me. Can't stop me at all. Right? It's crazy, right? So they sending it out. Brother Hatim, listen. Brother Hatim always got a backup plan. I always got to keep a backup plan. I want to say, I want to send shots out to everybody out there that's watching. The lines are open. We're going to have a dynamic, short discussion because we already going on 10 and I'm, I'm running late. Because like I said, my kids had a performance. I wanted to make that, make sure they was there. Shouts out to King Keith. Shouts out to Tara Hassa. Shouts out to Janice Riley. Um, um, uh, power to the people. Oh. Uh, so now, now it's going to play on my phone. That's crazy, right? Delete. All right. I need to delete that jump. All right. Here we go now. So, uh, who else? Uh, shouts out to Issa. You know what I'm saying? Now, I I love the fact that y'all like it, but make sure y'all share. Because like I said, my goal is to get 200 subscribers on YouTube in the next, by June 21st. Right? Because we're going to build this up. Now, here we go. Now, and we're not even going to cover the news. We're going to get straight into the folk tale. So I'm going to read the folk tale. Anybody want to join the conversation? Anybody want to join the conversation? I'm about to hit, hit you up right now with the information, right? I'm going to hit you up with the information. This is the number to call in. It's toll free because I know some of y'all on rate plans. I ain't mad at you. You know what I'm saying? If you want the email address, I see the email address too. All right? Now, so there you go. But this one is called The Hawk and... um. The Nightingale. Like I said, I didn't have time for preparation. I'm doing the, um, the morning um, videos where I'm doing the meditation and all that stuff. And we pouring libations every morning, right? Because it's important, y'all. If we talk about moving into a new time, we talk about new moving into a new into a new way of being. We need to start saluting our ancestors. We got to do that on a regular basis, not just during Kwanzaa. Not just during um, um, when we have our little festivals and stuff like that. Every day, we got to shout out our ancestors. Now, I'm not talking about the Malcolm X's and the Marcus Garvey's. You could do that. I'm talking about shouting out grandma. What's up, Miss Angela? Right? I'm talking about shouting out grandma. I'm, shout I'm talking about shouting out grandpa. I'm, I'm talking about shouting out those friends in your life that help you become who you are. Because if we are going to go into this battle, because this is going to be a battle from here on out, right? Because everybody is trying to rise. And they seem to they seem to have no problem with using black folks as a stepping stone to rise up. Black folks, it's time for us to start using the tools that our ancestors gave us. That's why I've been going into these folk tales. That's why I do um the uh the tribal quotes with the proverbs and stuff, because our ancestors left us crystallized wisdom. I'm gonna say that a thousand times, crystallized wisdom, because ain't nothing new in the world, ain't nothing new up under the sun, right? Our ancestors experienced the same feelings as human beings that we are that we feel right now. Our ancestors experienced the same pains that we are experiencing right now, and we could get something from them and we could take it and move forward. They have already left the roadmap for us to get up out of this, right? Donald Trump ain't new, right? This economic system ain't new. This eco the poverty ain't is not new. So our ancestors have already left us the keys. All we got to do is be bold enough to dig dig down deep, pull it out. Pull out that wisdom. All right. So now, here we go. This and I know some of y'all new to this, right? And I want to thank everybody for sending out be, um, birthday shots. All right. Um, shouts out to Charles. Um, uh, I want to. I want to. I want to make sure that you understand these folk tales are not just for kids. Let's get that. Let's get that. Get that out your mind. Drop that right now, right? Because these folk tales were originally designed to teach adults lessons. So let's get the lesson out of this. Let's get the conversation popping. Because I'm guaranteeing without even reading this, we're going to be able to bring it around to current events. Right? Because it's all wisdom. 
All wisdom is current. All wisdom is current. Always remember that. Right? So now, we're going to dig deep into this. We're going to do what I call wisdom mining. We're going to pull it up and we're going to break it out. But before we do that, my fault, I have to. I have to crack open a bottle of that ambrosia, right? I had to bottle some up. I got a special thing coming up. This is the original. Woo! Go ahead, baby. Oh, man. Ain't nothing like that live ambrosia. Now, those who are interested in ambrosia and not just drinking it, those that want to learn how to make it, I will teach you how to make it. I got all the stuff. To do. I, I, got, I could tell you how to make it. This is a health drink, right? It's a fermented drink. It's real good for you. And those people that support the um, journey, you when you support the journey, I support you with ambrosia, right? So you can donate a certain amount. You give a certain amount to journey, I give you a certain amount of uh, ambrosia. Hot damn. I'm telling you, man, them bottles make a difference. Hot. Woo. Man. The class is when y'all call it. Right? When y'all want to learn how to make this, y'all let me know. You know what I'm saying? All I need is 10 people. All I need is 10 people because I got enough. Listen. Every time I brew some of this, I get a new SCOBY. I get a new life form that's, that, that the creator has put down here for us to use to make this. I got, I started with a piece this big. This big. Now I got pieces this big. They recreate themselves to serve you. If you want to learn about nation building, right? Watch these things called SCOBYs because they know how to do it. Check this out. When they... When I put them in the tea and the honey, they seal off the tea. They don't let anything else inside the tea. They seal it off and they ferment it. They don't allow no outside bacteria, nothing. If you don't belong to that colony, you don't get none of the stuff that Brother Hot Tim gives you. Nation building lesson number one. How you got a nation if you ain't got a border? And what's crazy, I got that from Donald Trump. Donald Trump said that shit. That was the best shit. I, I was I was listening to that shit. That shit blew my mind. Black folks, how are we gonna have a nation? How are we gonna have a tribe? How are we gonna have families if we don't have borders? You got to have a border around your house. You know what I'm saying? There's certain shit in your country, in your family that should not be allowed. You know what I'm saying? As a community, if we got if you got a community, there's a border. And and oftentimes when people cross the border, there's a border tax. Where it if we got a black community, tell me where it is and show me where the border tax is. Show me where the taxes are being collected for that place where they got. Because uh, Bexley, Bexley collects taxes, right? You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. We talking about nation building. We talking about we talking about moving from the situation we in to a better situation. You know what I'm saying? Then we got to we got to have real talk with each other, right? We're not collecting taxes. We're not a nation. Right? You ain't paying dues. You're not part of nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's what I learned from the Scobies. The Scobie, if you're not part of it, if you're not part of that colony, if you're not part of that culture, you can't get in. Period. They they blocks it. They only they 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 it's hard for air to get in. Right? Of course somebody gonna call me while I'm on the show. Those of you that's listening, don't call me when I'm on my show. Right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna post up my number. I'm gonna post up the number for the show, not the private number. Right, not the private number. I'm going to post up the number for my show um again because I want you to join me on the, in the conversation. Four five three five. It's six one four four five three five. Six one four five five six four five three five. All right. So now. Let's get into the folk tale. A nightingale sitting aloft upon an oak and singing according to his want was seen by a hawk who, being in need of food, swooped down and seized him. The nightingale, about to lose his life, earnestly begged the hawk to let him go. 
saying that he was not big enough to satisfy the hunger of a hawk, who, if he wanted food, ought to pursue the larger birds. The hawk interrupted him, said, I should indeed have lost my senses if I should let go food ready in my hand for the sake of pursuing birds which are not yet even within sight. Where my lightning at? Where my lightning at? Where, where my damn lightning? Black folks, family, did y'all hear that? Right? Y'all think this is about kids? This, this you think this is for a kid? Right? This is for a child? Right? Many of you, many of you are falling for the Nightingale hustle. Last week y'all was peacocks. This week y'all falling for the Nightingale hustle. Right? Many of y'all are falling for the nightingale hustle, right? The nightingale is the victim. As a matter of fact, historically, let's go, let's do it historically, right? I remember reading, uh, I don't want to say, I think it might have been Chancellor Williams. But at one point in time, y'all do know that people that look like you, people that look like me, was running the world, right? And we didn't put our foot down. You know, we, we didn't advance with the technology. You know what I'm saying? Because we thought it was dishonorable to, you know, shoot somebody from 50 feet away. We wanted to be up in our... We, if we fighting, we want to be up in your face. Right? Because because it, it was a, it's a, a battle. It's, it, it's not just a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing, too. It's, it's a rites of passage. Right? So we felt that it was unmanly. To, to want to have something where I could project it from a long distance away. I want to be right up on you. We turned down gunpowder. Somebody proved me wrong. We turned it down because it wasn't manly. It wasn't warrior-like. It wasn't respectful. It wasn't honorable. Right? We used to run this thing. We could we could have spread out, right? But no, nah, we you know no, nah, we let it go. And a lot of us are like that in our life. Oh, I let it go. You know, so my wife get mad at me right now because I still do that shit. Ah, oh, it's cool. Don't worry about it. We let it go. Just let it go. You know, so my sons used to get mad at me because I oh, just let it go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just just let it. It's cool. It it, it it'll come back. You know what I'm saying? It's it's bigger. It's it, it's it, it's bigger as birds to, to to eat out there, right? We be falling for the nightingale hustle. We have always fell for the nightingale hustle, right? We got to get that, that hawk's mind state. The hawk caught the nightingale slipping. And when the nightingale tried to convince him to let go, the hawk is like, I'd be a fool if I let you go. I'm going to let you go for something I don't even see. Many of y'all do the same thing with your dreams. You have your dream in your grasp, but because it's little, right? And you got other people and you got the little dream saying, well, I'm just a little dream. Let me go. You let it go. Then you, you know what I'm saying? Now you hungry. Now you hungry. Now you lost. Because all dreams start small. Right? And you got to hold on to them. And you got to, you, you, you got to hold on to them. Right? You got to squeeze the life out of them. So that they can grow. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man. Don't fall for, don't, don't fall for the nightingale hustle. Right? Some of y'all falling for the nightingale hustle at work. Let's read it again. The nightingale sitting aloft upon an oak and singing according to his want was seen by a hawk who being in need of food swooped down and seized him. Now, the hawk wasn't greedy. The hawk was in need of food. Right? The hawk caught the nightingale slipping. Hawks eat nightingales. Hawks eat chickens. Hawks is in a hawk's nature. To do that, right? For the hawk to let the, this bird go would be against his nature. Black folks, family, listen. A lot of shit that we do, excuse my language, a lot of shit we do is against our nature. Do you understand that? A lot of shit that we do is against our nature. We're not acting at, matter of fact, it's, it's like the story of the hawk who thought he was a chicken. We, we're hawks. But we're acting like chickens, so, or, or we're Simbas, and we're acting like sheep. You know what I'm saying? We're acting outside of our nature. It is a, it's a hawk's nature to hunt and to catch something slipping and to eat it. 
right? It's the same for you. Are you acting within your nature? Are you acting it with are you acting within your nature or are you acting in the nature that was put into you? All week. All week. Where, where is it at? See. All week, because I need y'all to understand this. When you start plugging into the folk tales and you start plugging into the, the, the proverbs, and, and those of you that study other things intensely, you'll find this to be true as well, right? When I really start plunging myself into doing this, this is like this is like my 400th show with this one, right? I, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm on page 200, my fault, 229. 229, right? Each page is a folk tale. Look, I'm each page. So I, those of you that's this your first time here, I'm 200 shows deep. I done did these shows by myself. Right now, I'm blessed to have five people on the air with me, and I thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm recording it for speakers so I can send it to the folks that listen to me on speaker because they come in later. But I usually don't have people live, right? I'm saying that to say this to you, right? I'm 200 shows deep, right? This is my dream, and I'm not letting it go. I'm like that hawk. I'd be a fool to let this go. Right. But this is a lot of you that's out there studying. What you will start to notice is that when you really get intensely into studying stuff, the very things you're studying will start popping up in your life. The wisdom come in handy. I, last week we did a show about the peacock, the Juno peacock, the peacock and Juno. The peacock was trying to be something else. The peacock wanted to be something else, and Juno was trying to explain to it, be yourself. Lo and behold, I ran into a young a, a young woman being a peacock, and I'm able to use the story. Last week, we read a proverb that I could not decipher on air, and it stuck with me. And I'm going to read it to you because I've been going over this all week. It's been shaping my, my videos all week. Awake out of thy suffering, O thou that liest prostrate. My fault. Awake out of thy suffering, O thou who liest prostrate. Awake thou, thy head is in the horizon. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? So I'm sitting, in, I'm sitting at work, putting some stuff together, and out of the blue, it hits me. It hits me. Many of us are living our life unconscious. Many of us are living our life sleepwalking. And I know y'all heard this before. But have you heard it from a book that's over 3,000 years old? This comes from the book Coming Forth by Day, also known as the Book of the Dead. This right here, Arise, Awake Out of Thy Suffering, O Thou That Lies Prostrate, was a spell or an incantation that they used to put on the back of the head of someone that they was preparing for death. This is what the priest read to you. Awake out of thy suffering. Awake out of thy suffering. Right? O thou that lies prostrate. Now what does this have to do with the hawk? Right? In order to be good at anything. You have to be conscious. You have to be aware. And most of us are living our lives lost. So when the nightingale hits you with it, with the nightingale hustle and beg you to let it go, guess what you're going to do? Guess what you're going to do? Because you acted, you're not acting consciously. The hawk was totally conscious. The hawk was focused, right? Many of them see, because this is, this is what's crazy, right? Nature has set certain things in us to bring us into awareness, right? But this world is doing everything to keep us away from awareness, right? One of the things that nature gives to make you aware is hunger. I'm taking a sip of the ambrosia on that one. When was the last time you was hungry? Right? Because in certain religions, they fast. Perfect. But you ain't got to be in that. To feel hunger. When you are hungry, you become aware, right? Many of y'all, y'all munch all day, and that keeps you sleep, right? Not only if it, are you putting all the sugars in it, you're unconscious. You can't act in your true nature if you're not conscious. 
What fucks me up is that a chicken is more conscious than most of us. A, kitch, a chicken know what the hell it's supposed to be doing. Right? Worms are more conscious than us. We claim to be the dominant species. We built pyramids and shit, but yet it's wild animals out here that's, that's more conscious than we are. We're acting outside of our nature. And for that hawk in this story to let that nightingale go would be for the hawk to be acting outside his nature. And anything that acts outside of his nature is going to go extinct. Black folks, we acting outside our nature. Know what that means, right? Know what that means, right? If we acting outside our nature, we're going to go extinct. I need y'all to understand. This is serious. We're the only ones, we're the only ones in the game not taking it seriously. Everybody else is in the game taking it seriously. We're the only ones in the game not taking it seriously. We're the only ones not aware. Right? It's sort of like when you go to a, a little league football game and they put a kid who never been in the football game and they put the kid in the football game and the kid don't know where he's supposed to be. And, and the parents is looking at him, everybody like, that little boy about to get hurt. <laughs> That's how we are in the game. Right? Trump getting off his, he ain't playing. You know what I'm saying? His cabinet, they ain't playing. Right? Hispanic, Latino, they're not playing. Gays and, um, and um, LGBT community, they're not playing. Oh, it's serious. But us, we playing. Right? We can't even have a black history celebration without including everybody. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to go to, let's go to an LBGT um gathering and see if they include everybody in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's, uh, let's go. And you know, and they shouldn't. We're the only ones that feel, we're the only ones acting outside our nature and actually believe that we're wrong for feeling like the hawk. You the hawk dog. You a lion. You know what I'm saying? You a lioness. Right? Act in your nature. You know what I'm saying? Stop acting. You, 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 you. When, when a lion is confused about its place in nature, it dies. When, 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 when an elk is confused about its nature, it dies. Family, we have to pull it together, right? We can't fall for the Nightingale Hustle, right? Let's listen to the Nightingale Hustle. The Nightingale, about to lose his life, earnestly begged the hawk to let him go, saying that he was not big enough to satisfy the hunger of a hawk who, if he wanted food, ought to pursue the larger birds. Family, pray is pray. Let me say that again. Family, pray is pray. I don't give a damn if you little pray. I don't give a damn if you big pray. Pray is pray. Because that's how they look at you. Right? Let me think about it. They pull up on Tamir Rice. They didn't look at him and say, you know, he's just little. He shot his ass. Right? We the only ones, man. We the only ones. We the only ones. We're not acting within our nature. We on the battlefield smiling and laughing and giggling and, and looking down and kicking dirt around while, while everybody else is going to arms and, and, and getting ready for the battle. You know what I'm saying? We don't have our logistics together. We don't have our weapons together. We don't have our strategy together. It don't even take a lot of us. And this is what's crazy, right? Because we move into a GEMA. And, 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 and the piece that I'm going to cover for a GEMA tomorrow is this, right? It's not how many people you have. It's how many people you got that are able to collaborate. Right? Can... Can your team get other people to collaborate? 
It's all about because tomorrow is Ujima's collective work and responsibility, right? As a people, we got to start learning how to collaborate between ourselves. You know, because of course we're good at collaborating with everybody, but we got to learn how to collaborate amongst ourselves, right? You know what I'm saying? Collaboration. All, re all, all revolutions throughout time, all alpha thinkers. I, I hear you, bro, Isa. All revolutions throughout time were based not on large groups, but on small groups that were able to collaborate and to get other people to collaborate with them. Don't trust me. Look it up yourself. Don't trust me. Look it up yourself. Right? Think about this. And regardless what field you in, right? Look at the people that are achieving the highest in your field. And I guarantee that you might see one person. But when you really get close to that, to that person, you see that that person has a circle of people around him. They're practicing your, your principle of Ujima, collective work and responsibility. That's Ujima, right? Where you got everybody working together as one. Working together, collaborating with collective work and responsibility. They're doing the work together. They take a responsibility for the work. That's how they build. That's how everybody else is building. That's that's one of your principles. We need to embrace it, right? So getting back to the the nightingale, the hawk interrupting him. See, the hawk ain't even let him finish because the hawk is conscious. The hawk is awake. The hawk is aware. Oh, you're not going to get me with that hustle. Shut up. The hawk interrupting him said, I should indeed have lost my senses if I should let go food ready in my hand for the sake of pursuing birds which are not even yet within my sight. Think about that, y'all. How many times have you let something go because you thought something else was coming? Relationships. Money, opportunities, right? How often would you see a hawk drop a, a piece of prey? He swoops down, snatch up a, a rabbit, and all of a sudden say, well, there might be a bigger rabbit coming and let it go. In nature. See, because understand, when we talk about ancient wisdom, our, our ancestors... We wrote books. I, yo, we, but the ultimate teacher was nature. We had temples, right? But you, if you go inside the temples and you start looking at the temples outside of the ritual rooms and stuff where they're doing rituals and stuff, they have views of nature. And some, they had nature inside the damn buildings. Or they sent you out into nature. Why? Because nature is the best teacher of how to survive in this world. So when you see a hawk, and, and, and you use a hawk as your symbol, and the opportunity comes for you to strike, are you supposed to have strike? Or are you supposed to go full out? When you have an opportunity, you don't have to do it. You go into it fully aware, fully conscious. Bruce Lee described it best. He said, I don't hit. It hits all by itself. Right? When you are training yourself and you're getting back in tune with who you are and you're lining up your intuition, your mind, your emotion, your spirit, in your body. You're lining all these things up. Right? They form that, that, that single unit. You got that Ujima working within you. And they form that single unit. Right? It's prepared. You don't have to hit. It hits all by itself. It strikes all by itself. The hawk. When the hawk is zooming in on. When the hawk in the store was zooming in on Nightingale. The hawk didn't have to be 
thinking about every step of what was, was going to happen. His claws knew what to do. His ankles knew how to bend. His legs knew what to do. His wings knew what angle to, to, to fly in to get him right up over to hit that nightingale right. Right? It hit all by itself, the whole unit. Right? But I ain't going to hold y'all up, y'all. Hey, this is Brother Hot Tim. Unfortunately, nobody called in. Let me check the line. Maybe somebody waiting on there. Okay. All right. Nobody called in. I apologize um, for the faux pas as far as the, uh, the Facebook Live. I had to switch to about three of them. I think I'm going to start using this. Precision Guided Thoughts. I like that. Precision Guided Thoughts. That's from Isa. Right? Precision Guided. And that means you aware. You awake. Awaken from awaken from thy suffering. I want y'all to think about that. That was a proverb from last week. Awaken from thy suffering. O thou that lies prostrate. Check this out. Prostrate, for those that don't know, is a position where you either submit yourself, like when you're praying, you lay down like this. But often conquered people in ancient times, the leaders were marched in front of the king or in front of the general, and they were forced to lie prostrate. When you are laying prostrate and you're laying down on the ground, you can't see the world correctly. You, you, your, your whole vision is warped. What our ancestors were, was telling the person that was, that was dead in a sense said, awaken from thy suffering. Because when you're laying on the ground, you're looking at the world, you see the world from a messed up perspective. And it you assume that it's suffering. But it's just that you don't have the whole vision. Yet, when you stand up, you get a different view of the world. Arise. Stand up. Become conscious. Wake up. And I'm not talking about his. See, I, and I want people to understand when I'm saying conscious, I'm not talking about just knowing history. Because consciousness is not in the past. Consciousness is not in the future. Consciousness is now. It's being aware. Right now. What's going on in your environment? What's going on around you? What's going on in your body? Awareness. It's not, it's not all that deep. Because this is the issue, right? Our ancestors taught us correspondence which was the law um that actually is the law for the day yeah correspondence is the law for the day you got um self-determination where my cheat sheet where my cheat sheet this is the one for january all right but if you look on self-determination you have self-determination justice you got correspondence. The law of correspondence says, as above, so below. So our ancestors understood that if I could understand the things below, I could understand the big things up, up in the sky. So they said, know thyself. This meant they understood and they felt, that they felt their body. They found out about their body. They knew what was going on inside of them. They went down into this mysterious thing called the soul that people have been telling you about all this time, but nobody has ever really been able to prove to you that it exists. Right? Our ancestors didn't rely on empirical evidence to prove that the soul exists because you can't empirically prove that. It's like empirically even proven that you feel joy. Actually, they could prove that you can feel joy. Certain brain signals. But if you ever had a spiritual experience, it's not often based on empirical evidence. I mean, you can't prove a spiritual experience. An experience where everything, but I'll tell you one thing about a spiritual experience that, that is true. You're aware. You're awake. You don't have spiritual experiences. Sleep. I know some of y'all had good dreams, Right? But even if you have it in the dream realm, because when I say sleep, I mean an unconscious, right? You are aware, fully aware in that moment.
That's where you are. Right? And they took that from us. And we got to learn to take it back. Right? That's why I'm saying take the Nguza Saba challenge. Right? Today is Kuji Chagalia. Tomorrow is Ujima. The next day is Ujama. The next day after that is Nia. Then you got Kaumba. Then you have Imani. Then we start the whole cycle over. We're looking and studying our principles on a daily basis. I'm trying to turn y'all back into hawks so that you don't fall for that nightingale hustle. What's up, Cleve? Peace. All right. So, nobody going to call in? I want to thank everybody that showed up. Uh, Miss Patrice, Miss, Mr. Esau, Miss Renee. Oh, what's up, Mr. Mia? Brother Brian Harris, Tashana Jones, how y'all doing? Um, Charles Stephen, Stephenson, Miss, oh, Miss Angela, Miss, Miss Jackson, King Keith, Tara Hassa, oh, Big Sis Janice, how you doing? And I want to thank everybody for the birthday wishes. You know what I'm saying? Don't be scared. Hey, yeah, post something up, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Let's get, keep the conversation popping if you want, because I usually do an hour. We ain't been on here an hour. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like this. This is what I do. This is what I do. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because we can go deeper with that, with, with this, with, with this, with this little, with this little thing here. Because there's Jews in there. And some I know some of y'all caught some Jews and y'all holding on to them. You never know what how your wisdom will affect other people. Uh-oh, we got some other people. Somebody said, okay, okay. Go on and share. What book are you reading from? I'm reading, this is uh, Aesop Fables. This is a translated by George Fowler Townsend. This is the old school one. They translated it from the Greek. Um, I never took time to learn how to uh, translate those languages. They got enough people doing all that stuff, even though I don't trust a lot of them. But hey. I get the wisdom. What is peace? Peace is harmony and order. <laughs> uh, wait, I'm wondering if you somebody from the old underground, right? Because those are the questions, right? Those are the questions. You know, the basic question, what is peace? Peace is harmony and order. When you got harmony and order, you got peace. Um. So, now, I'm going to read it through one more time. A nightingale sitting aloft upon an oak, singing according to his want. This means he wasn't paying attention. Was seen by a hawk who, being in need of food, swooped down and seized him. The nightingale, about to lose his life, earnestly begged the hawk to let him go, saying that he was not big enough to satisfy the hunger of a hawk who, if he wanted food, ought to pursue the larger birds. The hawk interrupted him, said, I should indeed have lost my senses if I should let go food ready in my hand for the sake of pursuing birds which are not yet even within sight. Family, I am ashamed to say that I have fallen for the nightingale hustle so many times. So many times. I don't let so many people slide. Damn. I've been falling for the nightingale hustle. The nightingale got me, y'all. The nightingale got me. But, hey, this is Brother High Tim. I want to thank all of y'all for tuning in. I want to thank all those on Spreaker that take the time to tune in. I love all of y'all. Thank you for the birthday wishes. And I toast y'all with, with that ambrosia. Remember, anybody that want to learn how to make that ambrosia, you in Columbus, get with me. Get with me. You can make it yourself. Do we collectively share the same definition and outlook of peace? No, and we shouldn't. See, one of the, one of the, one of the problems with our view of unity is that we all got to think alike. 
And we all got to agree. Now, hell no. You know what I'm saying? No. Brother, listen, I say harmony and order. This is what I teach my this is what I teach my tribe. What's peace? Harmony and order. Peace might look a different way for you. But what we can agree with is that we do want peace. Now, the problem may come in with me and you, where our definitions of peace might conflict with each other. And we might need to go our go in our separate ways. I can dig that. I ain't got to agree with everybody. And I don't want everybody to agree with me. That's a boring world. That's a horrible world. That's 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 the type of world that I hear a lot of people in some of these religions want. That shit, they can have that. I don't want that. I don't want people agreeing with me all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? I don't want everybody liking me all the damn time. Because I don't like myself sometimes. And I don't like other motherfuckers sometimes. So, you know, it ain't about us in, in unity. But we, we can have common goals. Because let's say, man, you got a different definition of peace. I'm quite sure that if me and you sit down and talk, we will find certain definitions or certain things that we can agree on that we could work towards together. You understand? You know what I'm saying? We we don't want to get up, we don't want to get caught up in the robotic shit. I don't want to get caught up in the robotic shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We dressed in the like, we acted in the like, you know what I'm saying? Ah, you know, every now and then. We kind of look alike. You know what I'm saying? But uh, do you. Well, let, let me take that back. Do your culture. Don't do you. Because us doing us doing us has been fucking up. We need to do our culture. Don't do do not do you. Do your culture. My brother. All right. Any other questions for, for Brother Raw? Y'all can ask, ask me anything. I'm on that Ambrosia right now. I got half a bottle left. Uh-oh. Did somebody just say something? Alright. Alright. I'm hearing shit. Alright. Go ahead. Go on once. Go on twice. Ah. Uh, well. We timed out, fam. But yo, it's been a pleasure. And brother Esau, thank you, man. Um, nobody really ever asked me a question over it. An apple tree, a pearl tree, and a cherry tree can can live in peace. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's called a garden. Or better yet, it's called a forest. Right? In a forest, you have a bunch of different trees. You don't have all the same trees. In the forest. You don't have all the same plants in the forest. You don't have the same animals in the damn forest. But the forest works together inter interdependently to exist. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's nature is the model, right? A lot of us, we, we get caught up in these books. And we start arguing over shit out of a book that a man wrote when the ultimate book, the ultimate, the ultimate script. It's sitting out here floating out here in front of us. Here, let's let's spend a half, let's spend a weekend in the woods. I bet you some of our I bet you some of our definitions would um I bet you some of our definitions would line up. This same piece is what humans need. That's right. That's right. I just say harmony and order. Man. But we will be doing the show tomorrow. I will be on time tomorrow. Um, 9 p.m. We'll be doing tribal quotes. We're going to cover three more quotes from the African Opus Tree of Life. We're almost done with the first part of this book. I'm, it, it moved fast. Check this out. I'm waiting. Go ahead, Brother Issa. I'm waiting. You ought to call in. 614-556-4535. You caught my interest. Once again, I'll type it in.
They all have a creature that needs them. They sure do. Now, in, in, in Jammer, we talk about the number one. And the number one represents interdependence, right? When you look at a tree, a tree is an interdependent entity. All right, call in. I'm waiting. Anybody else want to call in, feel free. Hit us up, 614-556-4535. Oh, I'm already on the line. And if you're out the country, I give you the I give you the um email address. Uh oh. All your options. Okay, cool. Peace. Joining conference now. Peace. Go ahead, bro. This is Brother Hotel. What's going on? Hey, everything, man. Everything, man. Power forward, brother. Yes, sir. I can't do nothing but move forward. So, you was talking about you you was talking about peace. So go and continue the conversation. All right. Now, we all want peace. There's not a human being on this planet that doesn't want peace naturally. They don't want peace is because they have been made to not want peace. But the trees in the forest, the apple trees, the pear trees, all of the trees in the forest, they live together in peace. They don't conflict with one another. Right. They might compete. I was saying that yeah, they, may be, they might be compete. They may be compete for space and sunlight, but that's natural. But so, I was saying a harmony that goes on in, in the forest, we need it in humans. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of us, if you ask, you know, ask people, what does peace mean to them? And we can probably write a book on the answers we get. True indeed. But if we all, have, if we all don't have a shared understanding and idea and mental image of what peace is, how will we really achieve it? Now do we know what peace is like? See now you brought up a you brought up a great piece, right? Because actually the best thing we could do is have a picture of peace. Right? The because with a symbol, we could all look at the same symbol and want that symbol but get a different a different feeling from it, but we're able to focus on the image, I'm, which is one of the reasons I think that our ancestors might have used a lot of symbolic script. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's like when we throw the word peace down, right? If I go to another country, it's another word, salon, or, or I go to another country, it's another word, it's, a, it's another word, but that picture that you brought up. Is something that 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 if we were able to capture a peaceful scene, we would be able to take that right. peaceful scene, and everybody would be able to get the idea. So somebody like me might say, like, "Wow, that's harmony and order. I could dig that shit." And you might say your definition, but we're looking at the same picture, right? And and what a lot of people do, and this is this, you'll find this. That a lot of people we we get caught up on 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 the, I think the term is semantics uh, of things because words words are very they're one they're a double edged sword they're very important but then 
when we get real good with them, they become prisoners. I mean, they become prisons for us, right? Because it's like they try to describe things, but that's all it is, is a description. Like, for example, we say the word peace. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying the word peace, but it's not the thing. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of people confuse the words with the things. And which, once again, goes back to part of the reason why our ancestors probably used a lot of symbolic script. You know what I'm saying? Because it it it, it cuts through a lot of the a lot of the bullshit. You know, so I mean, and part of the part of you, you yeah, uh, of course, you know, I'm part of the ten thousand fearless peacemakers here in Columbus, Ohio. Yes, sir. And we, uh, you know, we, we steady moving forward with our objective, which is to make peace. And you know, the question was raised. We all have the same idea of what peace is. Because what's peace to you, like you said, what's peaceful to me may not be peaceful to you. Right. No, what's peaceful to the antelope ain't peaceful to the lion. There you go. <laughs> they they definitely have, they definitely have, uh, you know what I'm saying? But, and then, and then, it go, go ahead. Right, right. Hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? And and then also, what's even, what's even more important because we kind of starting behind. Because um, think about this. As people, right, while we're trying to get our definition together, right, we got to interact with other people who might have a different opinion of peace. Because some people's, uh, some people's I, I, um, idea of peace is having you up under their goddamn foot. So while we're searching for our definition of peace, other people's are other people are able to move in on that confusion. You understand what I'm saying? Because me and you debating about peace. You know what I'm saying? When their peace is totally totally counter to any idea that either either one of us will have. But me and you still fighting over our idea, and everybody else is able to take advantage of the confusion within our culture, within our tribe, within our within our nation. You know. So I mean. But that that conversation, I'm glad that that conversation is happening with um with other brothers. You know what I'm saying? That's a real powerful thing. But yo, it's almost eleven o'clock. I got to start getting stuff ready for my my show tomorrow morning. Um, I ain't. But hey, I will be back tomorrow at nine p.m. And you more than welcome to call in. Um, we're gonna be discussing the African openness to the tree of life. Some proverbs out this book. It's going to be a dynamic show. I should be on time for that one because I ain't got to be late at work. I don't think. Oh, yes, I do. But I'm going to be back, back here by, I'm going to be back here by um, showtime. Okay, brother. All right. Looking forward to hearing from you, brother. You, you take it easy. Those of you on Spreaker, I want to thank you, and I am out. I know I said that already, but I'm out for real. I promise. This time, I'm out. Peace, Mr. Stephan. Thank you for um, tuning in, my brother. I will be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. I'm out. Maybe I'll crack another bottle, but I got to save some of these bottles. I got something coming up. All right. I'm out. <laughs>